Okay, so, we discussed uh, nuclear decays alpha decay, beta decay and gamma decay. In these alpha, bit, alpha and beta decays the nucleus changes, the parent nucleus is different than daughter nucleus. In alpha decay just two neutrons and two protons form an alpha particle and come out of the parent nucleus. In beta decay, decay a proton is converted into neutron or a neutron is converted into proton that is how the nucleus changes. In gamma decay nothing changes, uh, the nucleus remains the same, it is only d excites from an upper energy level to lower energy level that we briefly talked about. Now, the next topic, the next chapter is on what we call nuclear reactions. Reactions you are familiar from your chemistry terminology. In chemistry, uh, there are lots of reactions where you have some uh, constituent molecules and then they interact and there are redistribution of atoms from one compound to other compound and so on. So, you get some product compounds. So, some A plus B become C plus D or C plus D plus E and so on. So, the, the chemical changes take place, the molecules change, but the elements remain the same. It is only a redistribution of those ions or atoms and rearrangement that gives new compounds. Similarly, here nuclear reactions, in nuclear reactions we generally have a redistribution of free or, or rearrangement of nucleons. So, protons and neutrons uh, are same, uh, just like chemical reaction you can have uh, generally you have two constituents to start with, there is one nucleus and uh, another nucleus is, uh, is sent towards it, so that it can interact using nuclear interactions and from that some kind of a final product is, uh, uh, is, is formed, may be two particles or three particles and so on. Typically, your nuclear reaction will be something like a, a particle A and another particle capital A and going to some B plus capital B. Typically, you can have more than two particles on this side, this side generally you have two particles. So, uh, in, a, in an experiment or in a real situations, this A is a nucleus which is part of a material, generally heavy nucleus, middle weight or, uh, or heavy weight nucleus, part of some material, a plate or some film or some solid block or something. So, that uh, is uh, here, that is here and then, so this is those A are these are the nuclei in this material normally known as target fixed in the lab. In whatever experimental arrangement, these reactions are done in some kind of a chamber, evacuated chamber, so that uh, they do not get scattered by those air molecules uh, and so on. So, a low pressure chamber in. So, this uh, material, this target is is clamped or is, is fixed uh, there in that chamber and that contains those nuclei of interest. So, if you want to bombard something on uh, gold, you can have a gold plate here or a gold film here. Similarly, if you want to do something on magnesium, you can have a magnesium film here uh, uh, or a layer here. And this is this is small a, this is another nucleus. Another nucleus, it can be one nucleon or it can be a nucleus of uh, uh, more nucleons. So, you can have for example, protons coming and hitting the target. So, this is small a is proton. 
or neutrons coming and hitting the target small a is neutron or deuteron coming and hitting the target or alpha particle coming and hitting the target or lithium 3 coming and hitting the target. So, this is small a is this you can also have heavy ions coming. So, that is uh, uh, heavy ion reactions though. So, there the physics is somewhat different what we will be discussing briefly here in this topic in this chapter is uh, uh, low low inner low mass low mass projectiles. So, this a these are known as projectiles these particles are sent and they come and fall on this target. So, this is uh, this is called projectile this a is called projectile in the terminology and this is a beam ok this is a beam. So, one after so this these a particles are produced somewhere and then uh, they are accelerated and they are given certain kinetic energy and then that beam of particle that falls on this target. Then uh, the the nucleus A and nucleus capital A they interact here in this target volume and then there is a, uh, the varieties of uh, possibilities uh, of this reactions and uh, so this A nucleus may get converted into a nucleus capital B and this particle A may get converted into a particle small b and then uh, this nucleus where some changes have taken place perhaps one neutron is added or one proton has gone out some. So, capital A becomes capital B, but it is inside that target material. So, it remains there normally it does not come out it can come out in, in, in several cases also, but normally what we study here. So, this capital B will still remain inside that target material and this is a small b which is again a light particle uh, close to small a perhaps uh, uh, one nucleon less or one nucleon more or maybe uh, this is a small a itself without any change that will come out of of this uh, material this side or this side in whatever uh, side and then this b which is this small b which is uh, coming out. Uh, so, it is coming out in uh, in all kinds of directions, but then in an experiment they have to be captured and they are captured by what we called detectors depending on what kind of particles you are detecting you have specific detectors. So, you have that detector the detector is placed at certain distance and the detector has uh, some kind of window which can uh, uh, capture all these particles which are going here. So, if you put the detector here then only the particles which are going in this direction these are those B particles these are those B particles they are going in all directions, but depending on where you have placed the detector you will be detecting only those particles which are able to enter this window of the detector. Now, the detector will uh, measure will count uh, the particles that are coming in in any given time interval. So, how many particles have come that is one parameter and what is the energy of that particle kinetic energy of that particle whether it is coming with 100 kilo electron volts or 1 mega electron volt or 1.2 electron mega electron volt or 4 mega electron volt. So, it can count the detect that is one and then it can also detect the energy. So, you have a number of particles as a function of energy that you get from this detector. So, this is the typical arrangement. Now, the, the there are various, various types of, uh, of reactions depending on what is this how this A changes to B or this capital A changes to capital B here. So, those things we will talk, but then there are uh, there is a very important parameter cross section which is the central key word in making any study out of uh, these reaction experiments. So, essentially it is related to the probability of that 
reaction and giving the final particle in a particular direction. So, what is that cross section? If I look at this geometry and see how many particles we are detecting here per unit time, whatever unit of time we, we select, maybe the whole duration of the experiment. Suppose the experiment is done for 5 minutes, say for 5 minutes this beam is on uh, and the particles are hitting this target and then these particles are getting detected here. So, in that 5 minutes how many particles I have detected here. So, that number if I call it d n that is number of particles which particles particles b detected detected means in this detector in a given time interval. So, that is this d n. Now, there are some obvious dependences, OBN de obvious dependences means if you have uh, this incident beam, if this in incident beam has larger intensity that means, per unit time more number of particles are incident here, then this d n the number b here or number of reactions taking place will be proportional to that beam intensity. If you are sending less number of a particles per unit time naturally you will expect less number of b particles in this detector. If you are sending more number of particles per unit time then you will expect more number of b particles here in that same time interval. So, it has to be proportional to i. What is i? i is intensity or flux of the incident beam. And that is number of particles in the beam falling on unit area in unit time. So, this is the measurement of how strong the incident beam is. Okay. So, if you have this beam here, if you have this beam here particles are coming. So, take any cross section and then uh, if this is A, the cross section area, the cross section area here. So, how many particles are hitting this area or going through this area or falling on this area per unit time and per unit area. So, number of particles falling here per unit area per unit time that is known as the intensity of the beam or flux of the beam capital I. So, it is it has to be proportional to this. That is one. Then uh, secondly, it will be proportional to how many these capital A particles it is encountering, because reactions are taking place uh, in this target material where this small A particles are hitting. So, if you have a more number of target nuclei, okay, because the, these atoms are distributed in this target material and each one of that, each one of that atom has that nucleus and there is a possibility of making an, a reaction there. So, larger the number of target particles in that volume, larger will be the number of reactions taking place and therefore, larger will be the small b particles counted in the detector. So, this uh, is also proportional to the number of target particles. So, let me write it n t, this t is for target. So, number of target particles 
where in the volume hit by the beam that is it. So, all these dependence that I am writing they are uh, obvious dependences nothing is said about the mechanism of reaction here what kind of interaction is taking place, what kind of potentials are seen, what kind or how it is the how that small a is entering capital A or going in the vicinity of capital A and how it is converting to small b capital B. So, those things apart whatever it is it has to be proportional to these quantities. So, that is why these are the obvious dependences. Then another obvious dependence is on this solid angle d omega. Normally, the beams have uh, small cross sections the these uh, beams that you uh, take from your accelerator and then uh, on the target you make it fall that has small area say millimeter square nowadays we have focused beams. So, it can be very very small it can be micrometer square and so on, but typically let us, let us say millimeter square. So, this uh, uh, width here or this uh, radius here is around say, say millimeter or less and the detector is placed at say 10 centimeters uh, that means 100 millimeters and so on. So, this is quite small this is like a point for this distance. So, from here the particles are entering in this and this solid angle is d omega. So, it is the solid angle made by the detector window on the point or on the place on the target where the beam is hitting. Right? So, although the beam is hitting in a, an extended area of say millimeter square or so, but for this distance it is like a point. Suppose, I put this detector still far away double the distance. So, what will happen? The many of these particles which are entering now they will miss the detector solid angle is reduced and the number of particles detected will be reduced. So, uh, as long as this uh, d omega is small this number detected in that time interval is proportional to d omega. So, these are say you can say geometrical dependences irrespective of the nuclear interactions. And when you write this d n as a product of i n t and d omega then you have some uh, proportionality constant and that proportionality constant contains the information about the actual nuclear interaction taking place during the reaction. So, you write this d n as that proportionality constant this I write d sigma by d omega that is the proportionality constant then i then n t and then d omega. Okay. And this quantity is known as the cross section differential cross section. I will talk about it further, but let us uh, write this in a slightly different mode. This i is the intensity of part number of particles. Uh, so, it is number of particles coming per unit area per unit time, n t is the number of target uh, uh, this uh, target material target uh, nuclei. So, n t so this is equal to i into n t you can write as uh, uh, say density of this target atoms per unit volume and multiplied by volume and volume is area A do not confuse with that capital A nucleus area A and into thickness T. So, there are too many symbol problems. Okay, this capital A is the area of the beam, area of cross section of the beam. So, on the target it is hitting this area. 
Okay. So, let me write A prime. A I have already written for that nucleus. So, A prime is this beam area, beam cross sectional area, this is A prime. So, on the target also it is hitting that area A prime and this T that I have written here, this T is the thickness, is the thick, normally small, thickness does not mean that 1 centimeter, normally small, so that the beam can penetrate up to that point. So, that is the volume. So, A prime into T is the volume of this target material, where the beam is interacting with those nuclei, target nuclei. And small n, this is small n here, this is the number density, number of target nuclei per unit volume in the target. So, this cap A prime into T is the volume and this is number per unit volume. So, that is the number of target atoms here. Now, if you combine this A i and this A prime, what is that? Right? i and A prime, i is the number of particles per unit area per unit time and then this uh, A prime is the area. So, this becomes the number of incident particles per unit time, this i and A prime. So, this all this is per unit time. So, this you can write as number of incident particles. So, this is now number of incident particles falling on the target per unit area and this is n into t and n into t the number density, number per unit volume and multiplied by thickness so, that is that becomes aerial density. Aerial means area wise, uh, it is a per number of particles per unit volume and multiply it by thickness. So, if I just look at this, look at this area and then how many particles are here in this volume divide by this area. So, number of particles divided by this area that is aerial density, area density, density not with respect to volume, but with respect to area per unit area on the target surface and then you make this whole target here, uh, this volume, how many total number of target particles are here, that is this aerial density, that will be n into t and that is written as small n a. So, this is small n a and then, okay. so this is d sigma d omega and then you have i into n t is n i into n a and d omega. So, you can write it in terms of number of target particles or you can write it in terms of number of incident projectile particles falling per unit time. So, both ways it can be. Look at the dimensions, there is a number of particles being detected d n per unit time. So, it is a number and here what it is? This is or take this one for example, this is n i number of incident particles per unit time. So, that is uh, number d omega is dimensionless solid angle. So, it is n a and d sigma d omega that is uh, again dimensionless and what is this n a? This n a is the aerial density number of particles in that, uh, a, that volume of interactions divided by area. So, this is 1 by area, right? this n a is 1 by area or you can take it from here also, it is 1 by area, it is the incident i is the number of particles going per unit area per unit time. So, this is that, uh, uh, is this is 1 by area and since this left hand side is dimensionless, this has to have a dimensions of area. So, this proportionality constant which is related to the mechanism of that nuclear reaction is having the units of area. So, that is why it is called cross section, right. So, this is in terms of area, right. So, it is meter square and typically the cross sections will be uh, much smaller than meter square and therefore, another unit is widely used barn, one barn. 10 to the power minus 24 centimeter square.
Okay. So, that is uh, uh, the uh, unit of area typically used for these cross sections. So, all these reaction probabilities depending on the mechanism apart from the geometrical factors will be in terms of this uh, cross section in terms of areas. What is the significance of this area? Okay. The significance of this area we can uh, talk qualitatively. Suppose you have uh, a target nucleus here and then the projectile nucleus is coming. So, let me make it slightly bigger. So, that it looks like target nucleus and the projectile nucleus which is coming. So, that zone of interaction, if it is too far away from this nucleus, then the nuclear interactions will not take place. So, as it moves towards this target, this distance is decreasing, but then there will be a minimum distance and then again the distance will increase. So, there will be a zone of influence you can say or zone of interaction you can say that if it falls in this particular area, that means if it is closer than this, suppose the interactions can take place if the distance is this much or this much or this much or this much and after that the probability of interaction is too small because the distances have gone up. So, there is an area of uh, interactions. So, if the incident particles hit somewhere in this area in this zone, then the reaction will take place. So, it is this area which is represented by the cross section, uh, but this is the total cross section in the sense that uh, in this area if the particle is hitting close to the nucleus, it can go in some other direction. If it is hitting uh, away from the nucleus, it can go in some other direction. If it is just uh, outside this, it will just go straight. So, different distances in this area correspond to different directions in which that reaction particle will finally, be emitted. And similarly, at the same distance, at the same distance it can be here or here or here or here or here or here. So, accordingly it can go uh, in one direction or it can go in other direction with the same theta, but different phi. So, each small part here correspond to a particular direction defined by theta phi. Each small part here corresponds to a small uh, a direction theta phi. If this incident particle hits here, it will go in theta phi direction. It is a qualitative discussion just to give a, uh, a geometrical physical visualization what cross sectional area uh, can be related to. Right, but not very quantitative and not very realistic uh, uh, explanations as such. So, it is this area, this particular area which says that okay, if you hit this area, then it will go in this direction. Now, this area is that cross sectional area. So, that is one thing. Another thing which is important in uh, this discussion is that center of mass center of mass energy or that means energy in the center of mass frame and the lab energy. What is this? Many of the theories that are needed to understand these nuclear reactions and those equations and related formula, they are easy to derive, easy to work in the center of mass frame center of mass of what? Of the incident particle and the target particle. So, uh, in this center of mass uh, frame where the incident particle is also moving and the target particle is, is, is also moving in opposite direction, right? because in the center of mass frame the total linear momentum has to be 0 and therefore, the two particles must move in opposite directions. So, in that frame Although in the laboratory the target is fixed and the incident particle only is moving, but then in the center of mass frame if I if I move 
then this uh, target is also moving, the incident particle is also moving and with uh, some speeds and there is some energy, kinetic energy involved. So, that is known as center of mass frame energy or energy in the center of mass frame. So, in an experiment we control the kinetic energy of this incident particle. So, that is the lab energy. In the laboratory where the target is fixed and we are sending those projectile particles. So, what kind of acceleration we have given, what kind of kinetic energy we have given, that is the controlling parameter. So, that we know. So, that is the energy of the lab. So, when we do the experiments and collect the data, we use lab frame, the parameters used in lab frame. Similarly, the theta, the direction in which that reaction particle is coming, that is measured in the lab frame. But then the analysis, the theories, the equations which is, which is uh, developed, these are developed in center of mass frame. So, energy in that center ma of mass frame or deflections in the center of mass frame, those are uh, important and these two are to be related. So, lab parameters are to be converted into that center of mass frame parameters and then compared with theory. So, if I compare this uh, energy, so suppose in the lab frame I have this target which has some mass m a and then we have this uh, projectile with mass small a, mass of uh, small a and this is going with certain momentum or certain velocity say v 1 and this is fixed velocity 0. So, that is the lab frame situation. Now, if the same and therefore, the energy in lab frame is half m a and v 1 square talking non relativistically even if you have a proton as the incident particle the rest mass energy is some 938 mega electron volts and most of the typical reactions that we have uh, in mind are say few MeVs. So, non relativistic uh, expressions are ok. So, that is the energy in the lab frame and in the center of mass frame what will happen? The center of mass velocity, velocity of the center of mass frame as seen in the lab will be m a into v 1 and divided by m a plus m capital A. Right. So, that the velocity of the center of mass in the forward direction, right, this is towards right in this figure as seen from the lab. Now, if we go to center of mass frame, the center of mass itself is at rest in that frame. So, you have to subtract this from these lab velocities. So, in the center of mass frame, velocity of this particle m a which is in this direction is this v 1 and minus this v c m and if we work out this v 1 and minus this. So, this m a will cancel out and this velocity will be m capital A v 1 and divided by m a plus m capital A. And this uh, particle which was at rest in the lab in the center of mass frame it will move with this speed in the opposite direction. So, in the center of mass frame this capital the M A capital A particle this m a is moving in this direction and with uh, velocity this is speed of m a times uh, v 1 by m a plus m capital A. Right. So, you can work out the kinetic energy now the kinetic energy in the center of mass frame, kinetic energy is half into m a into m capital A v 1 by m a plus m capital A square and then plus half m capital A and then speed is m small a v 1 by m a plus m capital A square of that and you can work out what it is half you can take out 
m a into m capital A that you can take out and m a plus m a square you can take out. So, half you have taken out m a you have taken out 1 m capital A you have already taken out and therefore, 1 capital m 1 m a this will be there this v 1 square also you can take out. So, it is this and from here similarly you have this m a. So, one of these two factors will cancel out and you will have a reduced mass m a m capital A by m a plus m capital A and then v 1 square and half m a v 1 square half m a v 1 square is the kinetic energy in the lap frame. So, this is kinetic energy in the lap frame half m a v. So, this is so this into m capital A by m small a plus m capital A and that is E lab divided by 1 plus m a by m a. Simple relation. So, you can convert from the lap frame kinetic energy to the center of mass frame kinetic energy when you have to compare the results. Similarly, one can also work out what angle theta in lab corresponds to angle theta in the center of mass frame to compare with the theory. Okay, now, let me talk about uh, nature of reactions to some extent. So, the target nucleus is A and then you have this uh, projectile nucleus a small a. Take it as a charged particle, the only uncharged nucleus is a neutron, a neutron reaction we can talk separately. So, if the particle approaches this, you have coulomb repulsion before that nuclear interaction can start in. So, that uh, coulomb barrier will be there, we had talked about coulomb barrier during that alpha decay process. So, there it was uh, alpha particle was coming out of the nucleus, here this small a is going towards the nucleus, but the same kind of barrier that it will encounter. So, if uh, this is positively charged, this is positively charged and the distances are large, it is the coulomb potential energy that will be the effectively that will be the potential energy, but if this distance decreases then the nuclear interaction will start coming in and the potential will be dominated by the nuclear interaction nuclear. So, if you plot this uh, potential as a function of separation between the two particles is the same. If this r is large it has to be a coulomb interaction. So, q 1 q 2 by 4 pi epsilon naught r and then uh, if this r is a small once it gets into the nuclearism you have some kind of nuclear potential. So, now we are coming from the large r side to low r side. So, initially if the total energy is somewhere here uh, the initially r is very large and therefore, it is as it is approaching if it has to interact with the nucleus through nuclear interactions nuclear forces then it has to go through this potential barrier and then only it can tunnel through it has to tunnel through this barrier. So, for very small energies of this projectile particle it is not able to tunnel through and then it just gets scattered elastically right. This is a small a just gets scattered elastically and in fact, it is not a nuclear reaction as such in these cases it is a coulomb uh, interaction. You do not have nuclear interaction between these two if the energies are so small that it is not able to penetrate. This uh, Rutherford's alpha particle experiment from metal foils it is it's, it's that kind. So, that is elastic coulombic scattering, but if uh, the energies are increased this will be the case when you have uh, energies say uh, few mega electron volts. So, this will be the case, but now when you increase the energy 
and it is able to penetrate into that nuclear region, then you have this nuclear reactions. So, in that, uh, in that case also you can have scattering, right. Even when your energies are such that it is going uh, through that nuclear interactions, then also it depends, it can uh, be just scattered here or it can do some reconfiguration of uh, uh, these uh, uh, nucleons. So, if it just goes through this, so that means that uh, final particle is also the same. This is B here and this nucleus which is recoiling is B here. So, generally we write this nuclear reaction as uh, uh, A plus A is going to B plus. By the way, there is a symbol for this reaction and the symbol is the, the initial nucleus here, then parenthesis, then this particle A and then this comma and this particle B and this capital B. So, this is a short form of writing this equation. So, you, you call it A B reaction like P D reaction that means proton deuteron reaction. So, proton is coming and deuteron is the final outgoing particle. So, this is a short form of writing this. You can have more than one one particle emitted here. So, you can have say one neutron and one proton coming out and this capital B is there. Then you will write A comma N P. So, this is a short form of, of this. So, if A is same as B and then the capital A will be same as capital B, this is known as scattering. So, that means, uh, if nuclear interaction is taking place now, we have uh, sufficient energy. So, that it is going close to the nucleus and nuclear interaction is taking place, but scattering is in the, uh, in, in the uh, because uh, this is scattering is because of the nuclear interaction, right. Because the change in the, uh, in the direction, change in the speed that also is because of some kind of force there and that force is coming from the nuclear forces. So, that is nuclear scattering, but then is this the same is a no reconfiguration of nucleons uh, in the system, then you have the same particle coming here and same nucleus going in, in some other direction in the target material. So, that is known as scattering and if they are really different A and B are really different and this capital A and capital B are really different. So, some nucleons have gone from this particle to that particle and so on, then you generally call it nuclear reaction. Although this whole thing can also be termed as nuclear reactions, but uh, normally A say is a loose term. You know, this is scattering perfect and if A is not equal to B and this capital is not equal to B, this is nuclear reaction. But then uh, this is also nuclear reaction. So, nuclear reaction is a bigger word. Right, but inside that bigger word, we still call this as a scattering and this as reaction. Now, this scattering can also be of two types. One is where the, uh, the, the this nucleus, the target nucleus capital A, it has been given a speed because of the interaction, it has been given a velocity but then it remains in its nuclear ground state, right. So, in that case the kinetic energy of this incident particle and this uh, target nucleus initial kinetic energy will be same as the final kinetic energy. Nuclei are not changing, so the rest mass energy is same and then uh, the nucleus is in ground state initially as well as finally, then the kinetic energies will remain same, same and that is known as elastic scattering. So, kinetic energy of this small a plus kinetic energy of this capital A before it is same as kinetic energy of A after the event and kinetic energy of capital A after the event. So, this is known as elastic scattering where 
the kinetic energies are same, the nucleus remains in its ground state. So, that is this and the other possibility of scattering is inelastic, inelastic scattering. It is possible that this projectile particle gives off some of energy to this target nucleus which takes it to one of the excited states and that much energy gets absorbed inside internally and rest appears as kinetic energy that is in elastic scattering. So, in in elastic scattering what will happen if I take this uh, diagram. So, initially the capital A nucleus is uh, is at rest and this capital uh, this small a is coming and then uh, this small a is going this way and this capital A is going this way. So, the kinetic energies will be the final kinetic energy will be smaller than the initial kinetic energy and that part of it will go into the excitation is going from ground state to some higher energy state. And then you have reactions the, these reactions where the particles are really changing A is not same as B and capital A is not same as capital B. So, there also energy of this particle incident particle plays a big role to decide what kind of interaction what kind of reaction will take place. Typically we have two categories of nuclear reactions and these two categories are one is called compound nucleus reactions and other is called direct reactions. So, what is what are the what is the difference here you have this capital A and then this is small a is coming. Now, depending on the energy of this small a, it can interact with few nucleons at the surface of this capital A or it can, uh, it can react with uh, all the nucleons of this. Right. So, initially, initially it will react with few nucleons here and then uh, the energy is transferred to that and then depending on case in some cases that energy can be distributed redistributed in, in other nucleons and if sufficient time is available then this becomes part of this bigger nucleus. We say that a compound nucleus has formed. Right. So, this nucleus small nucleus here gets here. So, one possibility is that just it uh, interacts one or two nucleons here and goes away a quick reaction fast reaction that is what we call direct reaction. And the other possibility is that it uh, interacts with not only with just one nucleon or two nucleons, but uh, with all these nucleons this energy is shared by this whole nucleus and then uh, some kind of uh, uh, a, a bigger nucleus is formed although it is not stable, but some kind of that is formed for some time say 10 to the power minus 15 seconds or 10 to the power minus 16 seconds and then after that it, uh, uh, the, it, it emits another particle small b and the remaining is, is capital B. So, that is known as compound nucleus reactions. So, how do, do we distinguish between these two in terms of energy? Uh, at what energies compound nucleus reaction is more probable, at what energies direct reactions are more probable, you can make a small calculation of de Broglie wavelength. So, if the energies are such that the de Broglie wavelength of this incident particle is comparable to the size of the full target nucleus then uh, it is more likely to go through compound nucleus reaction because now it is kind of interacting with uh, so many nucleons at a time. Whereas, 
if the de Broglie wavelength of the incident particle is small of the of the order of size of one nucleon, then it is only reacting with or only interacting with what that one nucleus nucleon and the uh, direct reaction will be more probable. So, let us uh, work out what is the typical energies involved. So, you know that the de Broglie wavelength is h by phi that is 2 pi h cross by square root of 2 m kinetic energy. Again we are taking non relativistic expressions because any nucleus you take for small a it is going to be 1000 MeV, 2000 MeV or so on and the energies we are talking of in MeVs or few tens of MeVs like that. So, that is de Broglie wavelength. Now, let us estimate it, let us estimate, let us say proton, incident particle is proton. So, it is uh, 938 MeV, so something like say 1000 MeV. Let me take k is equal to 10 MeV and see what happens. So, lambda will be equal to 2 pi h cross multiplied by c here and multiplied by c here. So, it is 2 m c square into k 2 pi h 6 h cross c is 200 MeV femtometers. These are all approximate values and 2 times m c square it is a 1000 MeV m c square for proton is 938 MeV and kinetic energy let us say 10. So, 10. So, MeV square. So, outside it is MeV. So, that the whole thing is in femtometers. Now, how much is this? This is uh, 100 here and root 2 here. So, 100 will go with this root 2 will make it root 2. So, this will be equal to something like 6 into root 2 8 femtometers. So, the kind of size of medium weight nucleus. Right? So, typically if the energy is around say 10 MeV, 15 MeV uh, like that then you will have uh, this uh, compound nucleus formation, but if energies are so big that the wavelength here is say 1 MeV, 1, 1 femtometer or 2 femtometers like that if energy is increased. If energy is increased double, so it is 10 MeV, 40 MeV it will be 4 femtometers. Right? So, if this uh, energy is such, if I increase the energy then the in increase beyond say 20 25 MeVs, then you will have a chance that it interacts not with the whole nucleus, but with only few nucleons and in that case you will have direct reaction. Another, so one is time scale, time scale because direct reaction means it is interacting with hardly one or two nucleons in the nucleus. So, it just uh, interacts gives energy and uh, does something it can pick up one nucleon from there or it can leave one nucleon there and then go. So, although it is a big nucleus, but it is essentially doing its own interaction with small number and so the time scales are very fast. They are nuclear time scales. This type of direct reactions will be around say 10 to the minus 22 seconds or so. So, the direct reactions the time scale will be something like 10 to the minus 22 seconds. Whereas, if the energy is low, if the energy of that incident particle is low, the de Broglie wavelength is larger and it is interacting with uh, all these nucleons. It is sharing its energy with all these nucleons. So, then uh, the reactions will be slow and uh, it will be a statistical uh, quasi type of equilibrium that will be reached there and after that the the reaction particle will be emitted by that compound nucleus. So, that uh, time scales are much larger. So, this is 10 to the power minus 15 or minus 16 seconds or so. So, one is this difference. Another difference is 
and it is all coming because of the incident particle energy. Another difference is in the angular distribution of this final reaction particle going in, going out. So, if it is a direct reaction, what will happen? Uh, it is it's in the it will forward peaked because it is coming with a large energy and then making those interactions and then going there. So, it will be something like a forward peak distributions, whereas if it is compound nucleus reaction, then uh, after this equilibrium is achieved, after that compound nucleus is formed, after this small a becomes part of this nucleus, which we call compound nucleus, this capital A and small a make one nucleus, then the dynamics of that compound nucleus that will uh, emit or eject that small particle b is is a kind of evaporation process the energy has been deposited energy of this uh, small a has been deposited into it its distribution in the whole thing so uh, it's like a hot water so lot of particles uh, uh, are evaporating similarly from this compound nucleus uh, you can evaporate one particle which will cool down the energy and take it to uh, the more uh, equilibrium state stable state so the, those the reaction particles a small b that are coming are coming from that uh, statistically equilibrated nucleus uh, and therefore the angular distribution is more likely to be close to something like uh, isotropic it will not be peaked in one direction whereas in direct uh, reaction it will be peaked in one direction which is normally forward direction let us say but uh, for compound nucleus reactions this compound nucleus reactions where this a goes into this capital a and make this compound nucleus c and that after this equilibration is reached that goes into b plus b so this b is ejected from here so this will be uh, say forward peaked and this will be more isotropic not exactly isotropic but more isotropic so these are some of the characteristics we will continue with this next lecture